This morning we're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verses 1 through 13. 1 Corinthians 16 verses 1 through 13. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever you shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberal out, liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be me that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through there. And it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, and the Lord permit, if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now, if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have a convenient time. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. As we come to this time this morning, there have been numerous stories that have come out over the last several weeks of the federal government cracking down on believers and threatening them with arrest. And, um, and I had mentioned this in Sunday school, but there's a, one of the churches in California, and uh, they had enough sense not to follow the mask mandate that the, uh, the Department of Health and Human Services had issued. Uh, two years ago, and uh, and they didn't follow it, and they kept on having services, and uh, the people didn't wear masks. And what's interesting now is that they they've been fined by I don't know Department of Justice, I guess it was uh, over a, a million dollars for having disobeyed Big Brother. And what's interesting, they didn't do what is now said about masks, that they don't do any good. But they didn't do it when they said it did do good. But they later found out it really didn't help at all. And so they're, they're being fined and, and threats are being made against them. And as we mentioned uh, in this um, thing about um, Senator Holly, and what was taking place. And he said, um, Garland's response was vague at first before he became more definitive. Garland, I don't know. I don't believe we have any informants aimed at Catholic churches. We have a rule against investigations based on First Amendment activity. Baloney, they do. They, they certainly do. And they focus on that. And... Uh, I, uh, I have up here, and it's a, a quotation of various things that Dr. McIntyre had written um, in his day of, of ministry and in his faithfulness to the Word of God. And uh, let me just read one part, is that America needs to read the Bible and hear it preached. The Bible is a book of prayer. 
when the Word of God accommodates itself to social forces, it ceases to be the Word of God and becomes the Word of man. Men who love the Bible are not going to permit themselves to be a part of a body that compromises and denies God's holy Word. The genius of the Protestant faith has always been that the Holy Spirit speaks through the Scriptures directly to the individual. The reason for tyranny is the rejection of God's Word. And I think we, we see that, and that's certainly a, a thought that we ought to keep in mind. It was the law of God, believed in the hearts of men who feared him, that gave us our Constitution. Both revelation and inspiration are the work and the ministry of God's gracious Spirit. When men once take an erroneous position in regard to the Word of God and its commands, that error finds its expression right down the line in all aspects of Christian testimony, fellowship, and work. The wonder of the Word is that it assures us that the past will be covered, the present may be used, and the future belongs to God. The Bible carries its own credentials and was written for the ordinary man to read, that reading it, he might believe its message of salvation and receive the gift of everlasting life and be born again. The fortress that has to be held if there's uh, to be Christianity and Protestantism is the Bible. As for us, we take the Bible as it is, at its face value. Whatever the book represents itself to be, we recognize it to be, and we accept the authority of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. Consequently, all that we have in our Bible, the Old and New Testaments, has been given to us on the authority of Christ, and that's the rule whereby the Christian church, throughout all these centuries, has accepted the canon of the, or the book of the Holy Scriptures. I mentioned this, and, and certainly not going to read all, all this, of course. Um, but a lot of the quotations from Dr. McIntyre's ministry. Well, when we were at Presbytery, uh, the seminary was sponsoring a lecture series on, on uh, after, the pre after the Presbytery meetings were held. And it was to recognize the work that Dr. J. Gresham Machen had done because his book, and I've mentioned this before, um, his book, Christianity and Liberalism, is having its 100th birthday. And, um, and so people, a number of people are, are recognizing that. People of the Reformed faith particularly are recognizing this and, and carrying that out. We had a, we had a man who was a, one of our teachers in seminary, uh, Dr. Eppert. And uh, he, he knew baseball records backwards and forwards just as much as he knew the Bible backwards and forwards and could just, just chant right off. He had grown up in Baltimore and was familiar with uh, things with baseball-wise. Uh, but he, uh, I think there's some lap over or very close to the time that Dr. Machen had taught, that Dr. Eppert was familiar with him and, uh, and knew about him. And he knew that one of the interesting things about, about, <coughs> excuse me, about him is that, uh, excuse me, that Dr. Machen used to have popcorn night with the fellas in the dormitories at Princeton Seminary. That's back before it was horrible. And, uh, but anyway, so what Dr. Epper did in trying to follow the pattern of, of, uh, of Dr. Machen is that he would have popcorn night at Faith Seminary and invite all the guys to come down to his room and have popcorn with him. I think like probably once a week he did that. Just loved it. And because uh, he wanted to be like Machen.
he, he held to the scriptures and, uh, and Dr. Effort was uh, you know a very faithful man of God and uh, and I know sometimes he would he would be writing something that was would be published in the Christian uh, newspaper the Christian Beacon and uh, and he would have a quote and he would say by a faithful man of God he never did say who it was never did say what book it was in and so the seminary students wondered and wondered and wondered what book he was quoting from because it was a really good quote and they wanted to know but he just he never changed that pattern never changed it at all but one of the things that Dr. Machen stresses in his, in his ministry is a faithfulness to the Word of God. And he writes in his book, the one for which he's so well known, Christianity and Liberalism, uh, several uh, topics and, and doctrinal things to, to look at. And he has a whole chapter on the Bible, on the, what, what it says in regard like in contrast with modern liberalism. And so he, he, he sets this out. He said modern li liberalism, it has been observed so far, has lost sight of the two great presuppositions of the Christian message, the living God and the fact of sin. The liberal doctrine of God and the liberal doctrine of man are both diametrically opposite to the Christian view, man, to Christian view. But the divergence concerns not only the presuppositions of the message, but also the message itself. He went on to say, the Christian message has come to us through the Bible. What shall we think about the Bible? Uh, what shall we think about this book in which the message is contained? According to the Christian view, the Bible contains an account of a revelation from God to man, which is found nowhere else. It's true. The Bible also contains a confirmation and a wonderful enrichment of the revelations which are given also by the things that God has made and by the conscience of man. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. It's a much better quote than to say that, that it's evolution. It's a much better quote to say that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. These words are a confirmation of the revelation of God in nature. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. These words are a confirmation of what's attested by the conscience. But in addition to such reaffirmations of what might conceivably be learned elsewhere, as a matter of fact, because of men's blindness, even so much is learned elsewhere only in comparatively obscure fashion. The Bible contains an account of the revelation which is absolutely new. This new revelation concerns the way by which sinful man can come into communion with the living God. You can read further about these statements of his in regard to Christianity and liberalism and see that there's a vast contrast uh, between what the Bible teaches and what modernism teaches or liberalism teaches. It's very, very evident. We, uh, we see, we mentioned before that this uh, church in California has been fined uh, over a million dollars and uh, I don't know if it's like Everett Dirksen one time it said a billion there and a billion here and pretty soon you're talking about a lot of money and uh, I, I think our level would, doesn't need to be nearly that high for us to say something like that but anyway um, they're, they're sending in spies and I understand they've done this in Protestant churches and and done it in Catholic churches too. I think it'd be great if we knew that there was some some um, apostate government man who came in here. Uh, 
we would, I wouldn't know where in the world to begin except maybe at Genesis 1-1 in the beginning and start there and then go on for however long he sat there and uh, just, just keep reading, keep preaching, giving all the glory to God, and talking about how dangerous it is, the things that are happening in our country today. There are some things that have happened in recent days. Let me find this. The devil got a foothold and the shift was almost instant. A Christian apologist says the U.S. government and culture are suddenly demanding things that were once unthinkable. Just a few short years ago, if a pornographic book were given to a child, someone would have been charged with contributing to the delinquency of a minor. But late last month, a judge in Texas ruled that pornographic children's books must be returned to a public library. With the Biden administration and several states and major medical associations fighting to mutilate children's bodies, Dr. Alex McFarlane of Truth for a New Generation says the shift has been remarkably sudden. The near instantaneous mainstreaming of the transgender fairy tale is just proof of how people, as the old saying goes, if you don't stand for something, they'll fall for anything which they have in this particular case. If medical professionals were ignorant of the risk of, for example, hormone replacement therapy, that would be one thing. But ignorance is not the issue. It makes young adults susceptible to 17 types of cancer that they may otherwise wouldn't have, Dr. McFarland says. I interviewed an oncology doctor on the East Coast who said to transition with HRT is to give yourself cancer. Nonetheless, America is rushing headlong over the cliff. President Joe Biden says that to withhold transitioning surgery and hormone therapy is sin. How in the world would he know what sin is? How in the world? I don't know if there's someone out there with a cue card, you know, or something. They put it on the screen there so he'll know what to read, kind of. And uh, how, how would he know? But anyway, this man has no convictions whatsoever in his vacant soul, and his vacant soul would, have, would dare to lecture the rest of us on sin. I can imagine if Joe Biden were here, no, I can't, I can't imagine that much. But anyway, if, if he were here and, and he was going to lecture to us about what sin is, we would think, this guy's already gone nuts. You know, and uh, I, I don't think that we would be well-grounded, you know, to follow uh, what the president has to say. The apologist thinks people would do well to remember that the eyes of Almighty, Almighty God in the eyes of Almighty God, there is pure wickedness, and he does not look favorably upon it. He doesn't. There are so many things that are happening um, in these days. I think there's almost as many uh, articles on, on the Internet net about the persecution of Christians as there are emails from from Bala, you know, it's got that, it's got, it's got that often, and uh, and not to, not to tease Judith any, but we certainly want to keep her in prayer, and uh, pray for the Lord's provision for all their needs. The trouble, as one man said, or as Dr. Machen said, the trouble is that the experience thus maintained is not Christian experience. Religious experience it may be, but Christian experience it certainly is not. For Christian experience depends absolutely upon an event. The Christian says to himself, I have meditated upon the problem of becoming right with God. I have tried to produce a righteousness that will stand in his sight. But when I heard the gospel message, I learned that what I had weakly striven to accomplish had been accomplished 
by the Lord Jesus Christ when he died for me on the cross. He found out what the true source was. And when accompanied by the Lord Jesus Christ when he died for me on the cross and completed his redeeming work by the glorious resurrection. If the thing has not yet been done, if I merely have an idea of its accomplishment, then I am of all men most miserable, for I am still in my sins. My Christian life, then, depends altogether upon the truth of the New Testament record. And so we proclaim the whole counsel of God. And he affirms this and speaks of this. And, and we've mentioned to you before and uh, about the, the book I've got contending for our all against the evil of our day. Contending with our all against the evil that we see today. And in that, we know that we would remember what we read in our scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 16, verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. And that's, and that's what we need today. That's what we need from all those who profess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We rejoice that God's word is holy, that it's infallible, that it contains no error, that it expresses God's will for us and these doctrinal matters that are covered and that the source of our salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ and there's no other, no other way. And yet we, we live in a world today when those adhere to the truth of God's word are being persecuted, when they're being tormented, where they're being uh, threatened with jail, and uh, when if they go to a school board meeting and complain at the school board meeting, then the federal government calls them domestic terrorists because they spoke out, I think in neat ways. Of course, my thoughts are probably a little bit different than what the government might think about it. But it's, it's amazing to hear some of those people speak and we're thankful for their testimony. We need more of us who would be willing to speak. Dr. Machen did Christianity a wonderful favor when he wrote the book Christianity and Liberalism. It's an interesting read and it's not really that long. I mean, for a preacher, it's not really that long. And, uh, and so we're thankful for what he wrote 100 years ago. It's just as true today as it, as it was 100 years ago. And, uh, and he was faithful to God. You know, I, I mentioned before, but he, he was a bachelor. He came from a very, very well-to-do family in Baltimore. And he was the leader of conservatism in the whole Northern Presbyterian Church and would speak all over the place every weekend uh, and then have his classes, you know, during the week. But he had gone to North Dakota in the middle of winter to speak to a church there. And it was horrendous. All the bad stories about North Dakota, they were there. And that, and that, at that time, it was like that for him. And he came down with an illness from which he never recovered. He died there, and he was safe in the arms of Jesus. May it be that we would have some more Dr. Machens. May it be that we would have some more who would be faithful to God's word. May we have here where it says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. May we carry out that admonition. And may the glory go to God. And may we be thankful for Dr. Major's testimony that he gave 100 years ago. By the way, when the Department of Education was proposed, it wasn't quite 100 years ago, but 
but there, there was one during his time when he was very, very active in the ministry and active in teaching at Princeton. And he went to Congress, he went before a congressional committee and testified a federal department of education because he knew that it would intervene on, on Christian schools and Christian colleges and so on and, uh, and that they had, they had no right to do that. And he warned against the danger of having a Department of Education. He wasn't just a, some pansy, you know, uh, but, he, but he spoke out. He was faithful. He was true to his calling. And he followed this admonition. Be strong. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we're thankful for this your holy and infallible word. Our Father, we're thankful that you have spoken to us through your holy and infallible word. May we have men who go into the ministry who will be faithful to your word, who would proclaim the whole counsel of God, who would declare it, not back away from it, and uphold it day after day after day. May we resist the devil that he would flee from us. May we resist the wicked who are leading this nation astray. May we do this for your glory. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.